Cohen. Um, you've probably seen her, heard her, read about her before because she is one of our guest bloggers. We did a bunch of events last year with her, the Mama to Be Mornings. Mm -hmm. um, she's just been a friend of Ergo Babies for a long time. I have. Yay. And um, we're talking today with Erica because her book just came out. It did. It did. And she just opened a really cool, I'm going to adjust my chair here. You're all good. <laughs> she, we should both be in I know. Oh, well. Yeah, well, I'll just rock here. Um, just came out with a new book, which is part of our fall giveaway. So we wanted to do this live um, before the fall giveaway ended. So you got to hear all about the book so that you can enter to win. Got it. Um, there's all kinds of other great stuff in the giveaway. So be sure to head. I'll put the link in the comments. Um, but we've got the book from Erica, the new Ergo Baby Wrap, which maybe we'll unbox later. Okay, or, I'm like yeah. reaching for yeah. it, but yeah. <laughs> Um, we also have necessities like VJ spray for post birth. Danny, her Danny, Danny Penny. Penny. Her stuff is so amazing. Yeah. Like smells incredible. So boob food tea. Yep. Cure kids. Hazel Village dolls. I think there's something from Hatch. Too. Hatch. Oh yeah. Going back to pregnancy. Hatch. Yep. Right. I skipped over that. Um, and then a cruiser from Veer. So there's lots nice. of cool stuff. Everything cool. you need to have a healthy pregnancy and then go on an adventure. Yep. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'm going to be asking Erica a few questions, but if you guys have questions about, for Erica, about healthy pregnancy and birth, um, feel free to chime in. We're a little far away, so I'm going to do this. Oh, thanks for already entering, Jackie. Oh, and hi, Laura. Hey, Laura. Um, <laughs> we will um, see if any questions come up here as well. Also, this is an experiment in time. To see. To see how this works. Yeah. Yeah. I never know. You never, never know. know. Two thirty in LA on a Friday. Could or be nap Thursday? time. Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Could be nap time. You could be pregnant, and nap time doesn't matter. True. And it could just be. And the cool thing is, you can always come back and watch it later. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, I'd love to see uh, see the cover of your book. <laughs> <laughs> to just see us. <laughs> This is the cover of the book. It's very large. It's very large. And you have to open it like this. You gotta, it's like a, you know, it's, it's like a kid's yeah. book. Um, but the book's called Nurture, and uh, we know it's backwards, because this is a Facebook Live. You might not be able to see the full title. But it's, hold on. Oh. I'm going to read it. Nurture, a modern guide to pregnancy, birth, early motherhood, and, and this is the most important part, trusting yourself and your body. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, also, I want to point out I'm holding this very soft, cushy ball that is here at Loom. We have a lot of balls at Loom. Really like. They're, we can, they can be used for feeding. They can be used for play with the babies. I love it. And for people that don't have babies, you can just hang out on the ball and use it as a cushion. It's comfortable. It's very, <laughs> it's very nurturing, Erica. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, all right. So tell it. Tell us about what you do first off, and what and how the book came to be, and where we are. Um, so I'm a birth and postpartum doula. I'm also a chef, although I utilize those skills far less than I used to. Um, and I'm a lactation educator counselor. And the space that we're in is Loom, and it's a hub around pregnancy, parenting, and reproductive wellness here in LA. And we have group classes, um, individual coaching, and events surrounding those um, those topics. Yeah, a bunch of moms with babies are just walking in. Yes, oh God, yeah, here. so, so cool. mo mother plus baby, um, which is like our version of um, mommy and me, uh, is starting actually in the room next door. And we're in Los Angeles. We, we are didn't in say Los that. Angeles. Yeah. So LA local, come on down. Come on down. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, pretty much, you know, I have the pleasure of working with people and families as they're navigating their uh, reproductive wellness, as they're navigating their pregnancy and their parenting experience. And I think for us, the thing at Loom is we're really focused on being a judgment-free environment. Um, you know, no matter how you're birthing, hospital home, birth center, cesarean birth, um, how you're choosing to parent, um, you know, we're there to just support you where you're at and provide you with information that's going to help you feel confident about where you are and where you're going. And I think when we look at the pregnancy and parenting environment right now, it's very polarized. There isn't a lot of just like, whatever you're doing is great. It's, that, that's, I think that's what everybody needs to hear because the truth of the matter is no matter where you're going, you go home and you're on your own and you need to feel confidence in, 
and what you're creating. And I think so much of the, the media and even just in our social networks, there isn't enough of that reinforcement that like mm -hmm. you have got this, even yeah. if it's your first time doing it and yeah. you really aren't sure. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of my soapbox about kind of what we're up to here. Well, talk a little more about that because I remember I went to a parenting conference a while back and an author his name is Gabor Mate. Mm -hmm. said, you know, we're all experts. We have all our books out here. You all can go buy them. But when someone asks me for advice, I say, look in the mirror. And that's similar to what you're saying. So talk about like that idea of really trusting your instinct and, and trusting your path as a parent. For sure. I mean, I think, I think our intuition, and when I say intuition, I mean it in not even a spiritualistic or woo-woo sense. I really mean just your gut. Like mm -hmm. when you feel something's right or you feel something's wrong, I think that nurturing that instinct um, in our intuition has really been lost in mm -hmm. our modern times. And I feel I, the thing I, I really try and empower mothers, fathers, partners around is just listen, listen to your feeling. Like what are you, you know, if you're looking at your baby and your baby is crying, what's coming up for you like what are you really thinking when you hear the sound you know what's the what's the instinctual feeling mm -hmm. and, and go with that you know googling and trying to figure out okay mm -hmm. is this my baby doing this or is my baby doing that or when you're pregnant trying to you know figure those things out is actually just going to cause more anxiety and, and i think right. you know i think the way forward when it comes to just moving through parenting in a modern way is just learning to go in mm -hmm. and continuing to go in because you know, although, you know, Ergo Baby and like what we focus on here is kind of pregnancy to 24 months, you know, as you get older as a parent, there's less and less resources outside of yourself to make these decisions. And so you almost want to, from the very beginning, start to build more resilience and confidence in your choices and in your decisions and kind of find value in those mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of polling and surveying. Um, to figure out whether or not you're doing the right thing. Yeah, no, I love that. I also love, it makes me, you know, really leading from the heart rather than the head. But also remembering, we've been doing this for millions of years. Exactly. It's in our bone, it's yeah. in, it's in our bodies. It's in our bodies. It's in our bodies. It's we our know bodies. what to do yeah. and, you know, really trusting that, so. Yeah. And I think, you know, you know, we, we do know what to do. We should trust our bodies. And kind of again, you were saying, kind of going leading from the head, leading from your heart as opposed to your head. But I think too, it's just, I think it's it's trusting ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think Absolutely. we're not, we aren't really programmed to trust ourselves. I think we're programmed to resource out and right. get affirmation outside of ourselves. And so I think there's a big part of like self love that is embedded into moving through a pregnancy or becoming a parent. Mm -hmm. It's like. I am valuable, my thoughts are valuable. I think that I can trust myself to move forward in this experience in a way that feels right for me. So Absolutely. I'm repeating myself, but I just no, think yeah. that. It's it's a point worth repeating, because yeah. sometimes you need to hear it a couple times. Totally. And sometimes, yeah, it's, it's really important. Um, so tell me a little bit about how a doula is different than a midwife. Great question. So, you know, doulas are non-medical professionals so you know we're there to help with the education around your pregnancy or parenting experience um, we're there to kind of be your cheerleader your support person um, and the thing that's interesting when we because there's different kinds of doulas there's doulas that just focus on birth um, and mm -hmm. in the birth environment I think the highest value that a doula brings to the table is they've been there many many times so it's not their first time at the rodeo right. so a lot of the really stressful kind of you know, more, I would say, unnerving components of labor for someone that's moving through it for the first time are not going to shake a doula. You know, um, and for a perfect example, sometimes in early labor, it's really common to be super nauseous and to vomit. And you know, if you're with your partner, they're gonna see you vomiting and they're gonna be like, oh, I think something's wrong or something's off. And in fact, it's just a very normal progression of labor. And so, you know, having a doula, someone you could be like, hey, that's actually normal, this feels fine. Like, let's just see how she does for the next couple of contractions. Whereas for a partner, they might feel really alarmed and be like, gotta get out of here, gotta go to the hospital and it's too early to go. So it's, it's little things like that. And again, I think I've said this many, I've said this many times all over the place recently that I think that doulas do their best work in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. I think hospitals are very transient environments where it's so nice to have someone with you for Absolutely. the full length of your labor, whereas the nurses and the doctors kind of shift in and out every seven hours. Um, so, you know, that's the value that's, that the doulas bring into the yeah. table there. And also, just to further clarify, doulas don't 
you know, check vitals or do, you know, exams or anything like that. It's very much in the education and support realm. And postpartum doulas come in with a primary focus of mothering the mother mm -hmm. and helping her feel supported um, and also getting educated on what's happening in her body because unfortunately in the United States you don't see your primary care provider again until about six to eight weeks. Right. Um, and at that point a lot of the kind of normal physiological events that happen after um, childbirth um, have kind of already kind of moved through their most acute phase. So things like bleeding after pregnant, um, after delivery, um, uterine cramping, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you sweating, um, and, and these kind of things that can make a very healthy person feel like something is wrong don't really get addressed. Um, and so the postpartum doula can come in and just help normalize these physiological events, help with baby care, again, also helping your partner feel more anchored, locked in. Um, and again, it's that non-medical, um, energetic support that can be really helpful um, after delivery. That was our experience in the hospital, having the doula there just to support. She knew what was going on. She wasn't taking the vitals, but when the nurse came in, she could say, oh, this is why they're doing that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it just, so having that support was amazing. Yeah, for it can sure. be really helpful, you yeah. know? And I think, and if you're kind of on the fence and thinking about a doula and you're like, I'm a really private person or, um, I don't know if my partner's gonna feel excluded if I have a doula, um, either at the birth or, or postpartum. I, I urge you to consider it this way in that if you find a doula that you resonate with, mm -hmm. a good doula is just going to enhance the environment. Right. You know, a good doula, I always say, is kind of like water. We just like flow in where there's cracks. So, you know, you're, it's like you're wanting to find someone who's gonna feel connected and helping you and your partner feel more plugged into each other as opposed to feeling like there's something kind of divergent between the two of you. Um, and it's always nice to have an extra set of hands postpartum too. We're both sprinting. Yeah, we're looking, I, I, I wish, yeah, I, I, you know, the one thing I do, I wish I had a doula, uh, I felt lost at times, that, that I hear that, and that is one piece of advice I do like to give pregnant moms. It was definitely the best support for our family mm -hmm. to have that. And, um, and then what was the, the difference between a doula and a midwife? Nice to have the support. Yeah, I have to say, again, just having the support. And even someone to tell me before, I mean, our doula we met with, you know, a couple times before we went to the hospital, you know, hey, Christina, stock up on your Depends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, those mm -hmm, kinds mm -hmm. of things that we don't, you know, when we're sh doing our registry and shopping for the cute baby clothes and buying our baby carriers, we don't necessarily think about those things. Yeah. And the doula ha really helped me navigate, you know, that. navigate that. Well, it's interesting too to hear you say that because that's one of the focuses in nurture um, is like I get into the nitty, nitty, nitty mm -hmm. gritty. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a whole you know, section on the postpartum shift where there is the transition, there is the physiological event. So for example, lochia, which is postpartum bleeding, most women are gonna bleed mm -hmm. um, as the uterine lining continues to shed six to eight weeks after delivery. So explains what that is, and mm -hmm. then there's a whole list of transition smoothers that are there to make that process easier. Whether it's depends, which are great, the first kind of two to five days after delivery. Yeah. Um, if you are not that interested in wearing a maxi pad, it depends are great because they're high-waisted, they feel cute. And, and you they feel, like, feel a little supportive on your toe and belly. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, uh, you know, as your lochia starts to like, you know, decrease, you know, things like, you know, Fink's underwear or underwear mm -hmm. that you're able to free bleed can feel like pads, you, pads yeah. lad rags can make you feel um, more comfortable, you know, as you're moving through, you know, the process. Of, uh, of the lochia as well. But I just think that a lot of the postpartum physio physiological events are not like discussed in, in books in a way that's supportive. So I was really happy to kind of just make sure that it was like really tucked in there. It's, yeah, and it's so important. Like, so important. It's so important. There's so many things I wish I'd have known. I mean, I'm glad I knew about the Depends, but just having that blow by blow yeah. is really helpful, for Super sure. helpful. For sure. So let's talk a little bit about pregnancy. Mm -hmm. What is, um, what's the one piece of advice you would give to a new mom or to a first time expecting mom? I would say a really good piece of advice would be to ask for help. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. Real, real person, real person. <laughs> yeah. Live, yeah. you know, veins, yeah. animated, not Google. <laughs> right. Um, and do it quick. Help, help, real, help. Real person, real person. Yeah. Even if it's just like a friend, you know, just, 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 just get it out. Get it out in a place that is that you're going to get real, tangible feedback. I think it's so easy to get caught in that Google loop. Um, 
Oh, I'm trying to think. Oh, okay. no, okay. it depends on where it's at. Yeah, um, these <laughs> are the things I had. No, I know I had no idea, but my first. Yeah, I had my first seven years ago too, Elizabeth. Um, the birthing classes never really talked about it, and the books didn't talk about it. Exactly. exactly. So, yeah, Erica, you're like water, filling in the just gaps. Filling in, those filling gaps. in the gaps. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the best advice would just be talk to a real person, friend, yeah. provider, um, partner, to just you know air out what you're feeling. So I think new moms, especially you know if you're in that very early pregnancy stage, you know, single digits or early first trimester, um, it's usually just a lot of anxiety and wanting to know, am I doing this okay? Am I mm -hmm. eating the right things? And and truthfully, you know, if you're talking to a provider, you should get really good information, but sometimes what you just need to do is just get it off your chest right. um, and, and kind of put it out there. So I'm, I'm a really big fan of just having real conversations with people that you trust or care about and help and let them kind of contain you when you're kind of moving through all these very big emotions. Yeah. For sure, that's good. Um, what about, what are the best things, kind of as at the end of pregnancy, what are the best things to do for your body in the last in the last few weeks to prepare for labor and that impending newborn? Uh, I think some good things to do would be make sure you've got a plan for afterwards. Yes. Um, you know, because I like to say, you and know. food. Food, food, food. 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 <laughs> um, and so a couple things. One, okay, plan for after. Yes. Firstly, yeah, where's your food, who's who's bringing it, making it, kind of what does your food plan look like, especially for the first two weeks mm -hmm. when you're really going to be just wanting to focus on bonding and being with the baby and doing skin to skin and doing kind of as little as possible that's not orientated around the baby. I think the second thing too is try and plan out your family dynamic. Who's coming in? What are mm -hmm. they coming in? What are they doing? It's typically a big question that kind of comes up at the very end, you know, because I like to feel like, you know, families like to just like slide in and be like, can we come as soon as baby's here? And, you know, and ideally, it's actually easier to kind of space people out, mm -hmm. um, have the most helpful get to come first. Um, definitely, like if your mom is someone who's like, make me tea and like, how are you doing? But I'm not helping. <laughs> then maybe yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> maybe she needs to come <laughs> a little bit later. Um, and like your cousin who's just like, put me to work, I will come and do whatever you need, needs to come first. And you know, actually, this that's a good point. Yeah. Somebody just asked me recently who doesn't have kids, she's, you know, my friend's having a baby, what should I get her? And I was like, you know what? Don't get her anything. Go to her house, ask her a few days, you know, a, a, say, can I come over a few days postpartum and make you a meal, do your laundry? And that's what I, you know, trying to reach out to those friends who don't have kids, mm -hmm. who might be able to help support you in ways like that, you know? Like, yeah. that's another 100%. piece that, I don't know, I didn't think about that until later. Later, yeah. You know? But it's a, it's a big part of it. I think it really, you know, thinking about that forward plan, friends and family, like how they can help, who's coming in. Yeah. Um, and then I think just in terms of physically taking care of yourself, you know, the closer you get to your due date, if you can't slow down because you have a crazy job, there is no room for you to be like, I'm just gonna take it easy or you're not gonna go on mat maternity leave early, then, you know, that, Olivia. I'm a big fan of getting a massage, you know, yes. maybe once a week before your, you know, as your due date starts to come closer and closer. My um, doula was also a masseuse. Yes. yes. Shout out to Carmen <laughs> Thomas Paris. Shout out to Carmen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a massage once a week. And yes. like, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can just go to some cheap, you know, Thai massage place or whatever mm -hmm. and just like get what you need. Um, and, you know, massage decreases cortisol in the body. And when there's less cortisol, you're, you know, it's going to help your labor to kind of begin the more relaxed you are. Um, and uh, just try and get some, you know, some decent rest. Real consolidated sleep is hard anyway. At the end of your pregnancy, you're waking up to pee and all of that. But just making sure you're preparing to not sleep through the night for the when the baby comes. So. Yeah. But I think it's important to um, make sure that you are trying to practice good sleep hygiene. So even if you are not getting consolidated sleep, you're kind of putting yourself um, to bed at a good hour and just trying to kind of prepare for um, that next phase. So we're gonna jump on this yes. question. What is the best time to invite people over to meet baby? Yeah. Great question. Yeah, I get this question a lot. Yeah. Um, I think the best time to invite family is a threefold answer. So, <laughs> okay, what? One, one <laughs> first piece is what's your, what's your family kind of energetics look like? Okay. If you have a family who wants to be all hands on deck, your dad makes great omelets, your mom likes to do laundry, um, you know, they're ready to just like show us, you know, what to do, then they might be able to come earlier. You could say, look, we'll call you as soon as the baby's here, fly in 48 hours later because they're down to help in the house. 
Um, but if you're not really sure kind of like what your family's going to do and they typically kind of want to just hang out and take up a lot of space in the house and you know don't clean up after themselves and just want to come hold the baby then I would say wait about two weeks because in the two weeks two things are going to happen one your milk supply is going to be established by about two weeks if you're choosing to breastfeed okay um, and also you'll kind of have a little bit of a rhythm you'll kind of understand a little bit of what the baby's starting to do because in the first two weeks most babies are pretty sleepy um, they're recovering from the birth. They're kind of what we call quote unquote angel babies. They're just like, oh my gosh, my baby just sleeps all the time. And it's just so <laughs> right easy. Here. It's right just here. Just here. It's fine. Right here. Naked, right here. Two <laughs> weeks in, these babies start to live up. They're mm -hmm. like, so how's this world? What can we do together? And so at two weeks, having more hands, more people to hold the baby, to give you a break and that type of thing um, starts to make more sense. Also, my third fold reason why I think, you know, the two weeks is a good idea. It's like if you have a partner, um, and you know, and you're not doing it on your own. You have a partner. Uh, I think it's such a wonderful time to just cocoon and kind of get into this cave and just like yeah. figure it out together and like create some rituals and some and some rhythm with each other. And it's so easy for family to come in and kind of puncture that bubble. And it's such a special bubble. You don't get that time back again. So um, yeah, if your family's super helpful and like sensitive and they get it, fine, bring them. Bring them. <laughs> but if there's anything, and this is that instinct again. The instinct is, it. Mm, I don't know if my mom or my uncle or my dad or my grandma is going to be able to do what I need, then you want to trust that because something is telling you that yeah. it's not such a good fit. Um, I just want to address Erica's comment. It's hard to ask for help. Totally agree. And one thing I learned was doing it on the registry. Mm -hmm. Maybe instead of having, you know, so, uh, you know, this many onesies maybe yeah. add things like meals or add a meal train exactly or you know make a, I think there are like baby list has um, the kind of registry where you can add all kinds of different things have people sign up for bring a meal over or or you know laundry help yeah. because that's kind of a way to ask for help but in maybe a little bit more of a comfortable way maybe that's 100%. What, that would you I mean would you agree? I totally agree with that and I think on top of it you can um, you can add to that. You can put it. You can have your friend. So if you if you are going to have a shower, if people are still doing that. People are. People are still doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can ask whoever's organizing your shower to set up your Good meal idea. train. Kind of put that on them. Good um, idea. You know, the other thing too, I will say, is on a registry, you could put a postpartum doula. You know, oh, you yeah. could say, I really want one, and instead of buying me like things, just put money towards us hiring that's a great someone. Because um, that's a great way to offset the expense. Um, even for a couple days. Even for a couple days. Just for a couple days is helpful. Exactly. Sure. And like at Loom, like our postpartum duels do four hour sessions so someone could buy you a few sessions and oh, then that's genius. how you would, you know, kind of do it. So I think that's a good, a good call as well. Um, and like another thing to put on your registry is maybe like massage for yeah. like the first week postpartum. Foot I mean, massage. Yeah. Come <laughs> over. Because the thing is the body is so vulnerable after delivery, no matter how it happens, whether it's, you know, vaginal uh, cesarean birth, you know, you need some kind of body work. And so that's a nice thing to put on a registry too. I don't know how we got to registry fully, but. Well, she was asked, she has a hard time asking for help. For help. I was saying yes. throw it on the registry. Yeah, throw your help on the registry. Yeah, yeah. put your help on the registry. Mm -hmm. Cause maybe that's a little more comfortable yeah, way to ask. Yeah, easier. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I saw the question, I saw scroll by about how do you tell family, basically how do you tell family not to come without sounding rude? Great. So I will say this, okay, for most people, you, we have these life transitions. So like kind of the main first one is when you get married, okay, you move from your family of origin to your new nuclear family with your partner. The another big threshold is having a baby. And so, you know, it's the beginning of new conversations that are going to feel uncomfortable that you might feel that you don't have the skill set or the tools for. Um, and what I want to encourage you around is just trying to lean into that discomfort and um, and have these conversations because they're the beginning of many, many, many conversations just like it around your parenting mm -hmm. style, what you're doing for the holidays with the kids. It's like it's just the beginning. Right. So I think in terms of telling them they can't come, I think a really great thing to say is like, hey, me and my partner just want time to figure out what we need so that when you come, you can really like help us, you know. Um, and I think that can be a way to be supportive of saying, I don't not want the help, but we just want some time to kind of 
figure it out. And if you're looking for more kind of like, you know, black and white things to add to that, you could say, you know, it's gonna take me a minute to figure out feeding and like I need about a couple days to just see how it's going and like I just want privacy in which to do that. Um, you know, you can say we don't know how long we're going to be in the hospital. Let's like, you know, figure that out as well because you just, you know, the path to birth is fluid. We don't know like where the outcomes are going to be. So, but I think rolling it back without having to add any bells and whistles to the conversation, I think it's just per kind of building your internal muscle of being able to create boundaries with your family right. um, as you're bringing children into the world and um this is just the practice yeah. of starting to do that so there's kind of no great, nice way great points just like yeah. gonna but even you could even make you know turn it to the like we really would need your help most a week after exactly you know, putting it in that to, you would be most helpful to us a week postpartum, a week postpartum. yeah you know just so, put it in an active specific exactly sense. and yeah, set that boundary that. yeah mm -hmm. so yeah um, I'm gonna use this opportunity to talk about the wrap, yes. <laughs> which you can grab, I will. because I have to say, I'm gonna tell my personal story here, and it wasn't. Should I take it out of the box or no? sure, take it out of the box. Do it, yeah, woo, touch it. Vanna White. Yeah. So, I, first of all, I love the wrap for the fourth trimester. Um, the fourth trimester is commonly the you know first three months postpartum. Oh, cool! It has a little pocket. It has a little it pocket. In. It's super soft. Super I soft. love the stripes. Um, Laura, um, our baby wearing educator, is going to be doing lots of tutorials on how to use it. So we're not going to demo it right now, but I just wanted to talk about, I remember I was, this was before Ergo, we had a wrap, so it was a different company, but I got a wrap and it was maybe three days postpartum. And I put my daughter in the wrap and I walked, I'm going to tear up, I walked down the street to a coffee shop and sat down and had a cup of coffee. It was like, it sounds so simple, but it was literally the most like, empowering thing ever because I was like I can do this I got this mm -hmm. I'm cool and it was like three days I got back from the hospital and just having that like oh I can navigate life you know and having hands free so I know I'm being super pluggy but I no, do no, no. want to talk about how you know having some sort of wrap or especially if family isn't around yeah so that you can you know make yourself a cup of tea yeah. or like my partner had a broken right foot broken wow. right foot so she couldn't drive great so hey guess who's going to the grocery store five days postpartum you and many other women in america <laughs> exactly who don't exactly. have the, you know who are single moms who are like exactly. doing it themselves so and and on top of it i'm also going to do a plug for skin to skin the wrap makes it super super easy, easy to, do to do skin to skin totally. and maybe you can talk for a minute about the importance of skin to skin yeah for sure um, I also will say my usually my push for wearing a wrap oh, around the, the first yeah. like week after mm -hmm. delivery is so that when you pee, you don't have to hold your baby in your yeah, arms. Exactly. Yeah, you can you pee can hands pee. free. Yeah. It's really cool. Use the toilet you don't paper. even know. You don't even know I'm saying that. But if you have babies, you, you know. will realize. You'll be like, yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Or you don't have to put your baby on the ground in like a little dock a tot right. or like you know sleep pod. You can just wear your baby. Yeah. Um, also, in terms of the. Uh, you know, benefits of skin to skin. Um, if you are choosing to breastfeed, lactating breasts um, are a very sophisticated warming environment. They help to the babies to thermoregulate or to, to kind of control their temperature because um, that's something newborns really battle to do in those first few weeks is kind of do that on their own. It's one of the reasons why sometimes their hands and feet can go blue for a little bit. Um, and also in terms of bonding, um, there's, I also, Again, I'm relating a lot back to feeding just because I know for a lot of new moms it is something that they're considering, they, they're thinking about breastfeeding potentially. Um, you know, I like to call skin to skin, you know, like your neutral gear. Um, you know, when no matter kind of what's going on, if your baby needs to be soothed or if you guys are just relaxing, it's a great place to be, which basically is just putting the baby um, down to a diaper, um, you bare chested or like wearing a bra if needs be, and just placing the baby um, to, to tummy to tummy to chest as being skin to skin. Um, and the reason why I call it the new, your kind of your neutral gear is because um, just that position alone um, helps to uh, support your milk supply um, and uh, just not as much, but as close closely to if you were feeding. So, you know, if you need a break, it's a great place to kind of um, put the baby. And dads can do skin to skin too, which yes. is also another great 
uh, use of the wrap. I helped a lot of dads Get use the wrap. Um, you know, they take their shirt off. It's a great way. Now they can't regulate temperature. Dads mm -hmm. can't. They don't have all those great little yeah. nodes or whatever yes. they're called. Yes. Sorry, I don't have the term. But it is a great way for dads to bond with baby too. One hundred percent. Just want to throw that out there. And besides the and the it's feeding, magical. Yes, it Elizabeth, is it's totally magical. 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 So magical, and it helps regulate their um, their. Uh, Heart, their heart rate, mm -hmm. their breathing, they're mimicking a lot off of whoever is holding them, um, whoever's doing skin to skin, so yeah. it has a lot of um, benefits for the baby in terms of just bonding and helping the baby feel secure, and it's addictive. Yeah, Just to sure. be blunt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I have a couple other questions that people have asked you in the past oh, about, okay. like, how much exercise is okay in pregnancy? Well, you know, again, I just want to kind of clarify that I'm not a medical provider, so a lot of these, this component Kangaroo of the care, advice yeah. um, is going to be, you know, from what providers have kind of cleared with me and from what I've seen with my clients, but exercise in pregnancy is going to differ from, you know, from person to person. You know, if you've had a pretty strong or kind of regular regime, you know, through your most of your life, um, it's usually very safe to continue that in pregnancy. Um, so if you're working out five days a week and you still have the energy to do it, you can do that. Um, I think what I have heard quite a few times is, you know, pregnancy is probably not the most ideal time to begin something strenuous and new. Right. Um, to try and start, like, you know, I'm too, in my second trimester, I'm going to begin CrossFit. Like, you know, maybe, maybe not. I think it's probably best to kind of continue what you're doing, or if you do want to up your exercise, doing exercise that's kind of more gentle, lengthening of the muscles, things like Pilates or swimming, yoga. Um, yoga that was my uh, favorite. Exactly. Yeah. Um, walking. Yeah. Walking, hiking, um, you know, those, those are kind of good things. So those are also things you can continue mommy and me. You exactly. can do yoga mommy and me, you can hike with the baby. Exactly. They're all things that you can continue. I mean, if you're doing some sort of exercise that, I don't know, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, but then depending on, you know, if it's a low, uh, Kind of impact us. impact thank mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. then it is something you can continue with baby exactly you know yeah. it, it, you just flow right into, right into having mommy and me yoga or mm -hmm. mommy and me hike with your wrap exactly yep totally so, that, so it's like it's nice to do things that you can kind of continue to do with the baby with the baby yeah. exactly so you can't do crossfit with the baby this is true. i mean you probably can but i i, I mean you know I, what? I, 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 let's not yeah let's not but just there. as an example yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. bicycle you can't bicycle with the well, you can if you put your bike, you've got your baby in a little car seat. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, let's see. Are there any yoga helpful? Yes. Light lifting, for sure. Yeah, you can have, you know, the weights. Yeah. At your house, that sort of thing. That's, Easy weight lifting. That's great. Yeah, it's totally Hi, fine. Jess. Um, let's see. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have any other questions. Do you guys have any other questions? Yeah, any last questions? Any last questions? Um... Well, actually, let's touch really quick oh. on your, because uh, this was a big one for me, on your nutrition background. Okay. Talk about some good nourishing foods for a healthy pregnancy and also that first trimester nausea. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I think postpartum in terms of foods, I think it's really important to get lots of good fat in. Mm -hmm. um, fat is going to help your energy, is going to keep you full for longer. It's also going to make you feel more just stable in terms of your blood sugar um, so you know whatever you're eating even if like let's just say all you had time to do was just like make some rice you know with the rice like put some olive oil in it or some butter or, some pea or avocado yeah. um, to kind of help it extend and like you know one of my favorite kind of quick snacks for new moms to hit that sugar and that fat is just get a date split it open stuff it with almond butter nice um, it's just like you can get that in like and um, you can kind of have those around I shove walnuts in a date Perfect. Just take a walnut and shove it in. That's there. basically nut butter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, okay. So that. So that's a really great thing to do. Um, and then, uh, you know, also I think postpartum again is just like remembering to eat. But again, um, like high fat foods, good protein, um, because you are still losing blood, um, and you may or may not be breastfeeding, so you may or may not be making milk. Um, I also think soups are really nice and easy, oh, yeah. things that you can just hold in your hand and go, ooh, let's mm -hmm. get that in. I think bone broth is a really yes. excellent thing to have around postpartum. Sure. And also, don't be shy about bone broth. You don't have to just drink it on its own. It doesn't have to be the base for chicken soup. You can use bone broth in your oatmeal. Yeah. You can use bone broth to poach an egg. You know what I do? I put the bone broth on the... I can't talk today. Why can't I do any words? I put you're it on good. the stove top. 
drink and that. I crack an egg in mm -hmm. it and then stir it kind of like egg drop soup and yep. then I just drink that exactly. so it has a little extra fat and protein in the bone broth it's perfect that's, so exactly. that's my morning breakfast sometimes see that's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about yeah. something like that is going to help you feel you can make a smoothie with bone broth and avocado you can. and cilantro yeah and it so can be good. a savory yep. uh, smoothie yeah. so um, there's, and you know, there's a lot, of, a couple of really good recipes in in Nurture. Mm -hmm. I, well, unfortunately, I was only able to have two postpartum recipes in there, but every there's 12 recipes that you can just continue using from your pregnancy into the postpartum. But nice. there's a really great um, overnight oats recipe. It's a super grain uh, soaked porridge. It's got you know chia, blackstrap, molasses. Um, it's got uh, like full fat milk, which I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of postpartum. Um, you know, and it's it's really filling and high protein. Um, and then for pregnancy first trimester with uh, nausea, nausea, I mean, look, I, I think what I am gonna say is this, as opposed to just giving food concepts out, is that your first trimester, you have a large amount of progesterone in your system. Um, and what that does is it slows down your gut to make sure that whatever you're eating is going to have all or as much nutrients pulled from it as possible to get to the baby. Um, so if you're nauseous, you're probably not really eating that much. Um, and so I just want to kind of help support, you know, the, maybe the anxiety around that because I'm like, I'm not getting enough for my baby. Like, is everything going to be okay? Your body is going to, because of that, that, um, slower motility in your digestive tract, um, whatever you eat, even if it's just like crackers and apple juice, your body is going to pull as much as it can from that um, and pull from you to get your baby kind of what you need. Um, in terms of cutting nausea, I think, you know, ginger tea can be really mm -hmm. helpful. Um, just kind of like, you know, sipping that through the day, whether cold or, um, or hot. Um, and for some people waking up in the morning and putting crackers in, yeah. eating something carbohydrate automatically, because there has been some research that's shown that the nausea in pregnancy has something to do with blood sugar. It's not direct correlation, but there is some type of relationship. Yeah, so I had to have a piece of toast before I even sat up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to just like <laughs> stop. So yeah. there is definitely like, you know, a food component there. Um, I'm trying to think what else I think is helpful food wise. I just think it's so individuated. It's like what I'm gonna yeah. say in terms of it won't necessarily work for everyone, but I do think some things to try. Some things to try yeah. would be like, yeah, definitely ginger tea, eating something carbohydrate based before you wake up yeah, in the morning. Everything. Yeah, ginger um, everything. Yeah. What else is kind of good? I'm trying to think what else for nausea. Um, hi, Exa. Oh, sorry, hi. Hi, hi Exa. And, and, yes, it is a giant stress ball. I'm so. Hello. I, I might have to leave with this. It's I so know, good. Isn't it I mean, good? I'm not really going like, to steal it, but oh my God, it's so good. So yes. Good. And Jess, didn't you just announce your pregnancy? <gasps> That's Yay. so exciting. Ginger everything, I know. I, I know, also really true. like the ginger chews, too. And there's a the ginger tea I'm so obsessed with right now is called Pukka, P-U-K-K-A. What? Never heard of it. It's a, it's a UK brand. They okay. usually have it at Whole Foods, but you can get it on Amazon. It's so gingery. It's like fiery. And I love that because that's really going to be the thing that kind of helps. You kind of want a good. good amount of ginger in terms of the grams. And also, Jamaica... Um, uh, Reed's Jamaican ginger beer. Oh yeah, the ginger beer. I was gonna ask about ginger Super beer. Super good. Yeah, but Reed, Kelly on our team is obsessed with ginger beer, and it's, it's like it's, the it's best. serious, it's serious ginger, serious ginger. But yeah, but Reed's um, ginger beer has has about fifteen grams in it, so it's okay. the one like it's actually got a high amount of real ginger, ginger. Um, versus just like the flavor rent or like that kind of thing. Right. Reed's is great. Yeah, yeah. The, the those ginger things you buy off the shelf, like Canadian Dry or whatever. Not yeah, ginger. that's not ginger. Not you ginger. want to get Reeds, yeah. R E E D S. So good. It's a Jamaican gun brand. Sorry. And yes, this. congratulations, <laughs> Jess. I loved your birth announce or your pregnancy announcement. It was so cute. Cute. Super cute. Um. All right. What else? What else? Anyone else have Any questions? Other questions? Anyone? Mm, hot fire. Yeah. She likes the ginger. I Let know. She's sheet. yeah. And she's just pregnant, so she's probably she gonna needs like. It. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, I think we'll. Is there any last parting thoughts that you have for us? Um, that you wanna? Yeah, it's just a super exciting time, and um, I think maybe oh. for the local Los Angeles yes. people, talk briefly about the classes you guys are offering because oh. it's kind of amazing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. You know, if you're currently expecting or parenting under 24 months, we have some really awesome classes here at Loom. 
you know, expecting, we kind of cover the full gambit. So we have a class called PrEP that's like our version of childbirth education. It's like modern, fun, really fact-based, you won't be bored. Um, <laughs> we also have infant feeding basics that focuses on breast, bottle, and supplementation. So if you're kind of unsure about how you want to navigate your feeding plan um, postpartum, it's a really great kind of info pack class to help you make, you know, the decisions going to feel right for you and your family. Um, and then also we, uh, for new parents, we have our kind of overarching program called Plus Baby and we have Mother Plus Baby and Family Plus Baby. Um, and you basically can either come in just as a mom and do the program with you and your baby for, you know, 24 months or Family Plus Baby, you and your partner can come together and take the, the program. Um, and so for a lot of families that feels um, really nice. And then we have some great events. We have a cool talk actually coming up next Thursday with Laura Miller, who's this really amazing um, vegan chef and author. She's also a new mom and has spoken really openly about depression and anxiety and navigating it um, in her pregnancy and um, as a new mom. So she's awesome. gonna be speaking and we're gonna be in conversation. Awesome. Um, and I think she's such an awesome person and I think her story is so cool and so inspiring. Um, and I think we just need to be talking more about depression and anxiety and just the stress. Yeah, we didn't even touch on postpartum depression. That's a whole nother. And Whitney, I see your question, but I wanted to say one last thing before we, um, I ask Erica yes. any advice. Her, er, Whitney's question is any advice for nine months pregnant waiting for labor to start? So we're going to address that and then we'll talk about um, the se second Saturday of every month. The yes, hang. the hang. The hang. The hang. <laughs> So why don't you address the question and then we'll talk about, you can talk about the hang. Okay, so yeah, so Whitney, you know, it's interesting. Most, you know, first time moms typically run over their date, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's more unusual actually to deliver the day of your, <laughs> your, the date you were told. I always like to say people just pick like a time of the month, like early June, okay. late June. <laughs> um, so in terms of things you can do, you know, it really just depends on what's happening kind of, you know, with your cervix. I mean, if you're, working with an OB or a midwife, it might be nice to try and get um, some more details about what your body's doing. Um, I think, and when I say more details, you know, asking your provider to give you more info than just, you know, your cervix is soft. Ask, you know, how high is, my, where is my baby? So ask for like your pelvic station, ask, you know, how effaced you are, so how soft the cervix is and whether or not you're dilated. Those three bits of information can kind of help you make some decisions outside of your provider environment of ways that you can kind of get things going. Um, you know, if your baby's slightly high and hasn't engaged in the pelvis, seeing a chiropractor might be great or, a, you know, a physical therapist or body worker who's, you know, expert, has expertise in helping to kind of open up the, the sacrum and open up, to help open up the pelvis by doing, you know, some manipulation. Acupuncture is really helpful. Around 36 weeks is kind of the best time to start labor prep. So if you are around that stage, you could start doing it then. And the thing with acupuncture too is it's cumulative. So you kind of give, gotta give it, you won't just necessarily go for like one session um, and then, you know, off you go. Um, so acupuncture and chiropractic are great. The other thing I would recommend too is, you know, if your provider is open to it and let's say your cervix is slightly open, um, you know, a very low tech, like non-invasive thing is just to ask your provider to strip your membranes, you know, and they, you can go back and have them do that a couple times. And sometimes that's enough to kind of get you into labor and you don't have to stay in the hospital to have that happen. Your, you know, your doctor can do it at the office, your midwife can come to your house and do it. And sometimes that's all we need to kind of, um, you know, kind of get things going. So those are my three, three, three things. Um, yeah, chiropractics, massage, acupuncture, and stripping your, mem your membranes. I'm sorry, my language is leaving me. If your cervix is, is open enough or soft enough for your provider to kind of get in there. What about the myths about like, I mean, my deal is walk, you know, go for walks. Totally, I mean, walking, but here's my thing about that. Okay. So labor is not called labor for nothing. Right. right? It's, a lot oh, of, it's a lot of work. I see where you you're know, going. You're, you're in there, you're like, right. you're doing it. You're like, Full on. True. The problem is if a, if you overexert yourself with hikes and like you know I'm swimming, I'm out here, I'm doing all these things, you know sometimes by the time you go into labor you're tired. Right. So I think it's important to have a nice balance of yes, definitely like go for a nice long hike or a walk, mm -hmm. but you know don't overdo it. Make sure that you're having a good amount of exertion and mm -hmm. then a good amount of rest and then maybe adding in these other components I just talked about so that you're not totally tapped out by the time it's go time. Cool, good point, I love that. And yeah. Hi Faye. Hi Faye. <laughs> Hi. Um, 
All right, do on Sunday. Congratulations, Whitney. Yeah, good, good luck. Good plan. Good, good plan. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So real quick, the, if also if you're in LA, um, we we are going to be supporting the Hang. Yes, here at Loom. Tell it's us our, about the Hang. It's our free community event for um, families, um, all the whole family, and uh, it's going to be the second, second sa Saturday. Sa second Saturday of every month yep. um, from eleven to one o'clock, and you can come. Our Loom folks will be here, our Loom team. Our um, baby Earth, folks will be here. And you can try will. this, you know, you can try the wrap on. Wrap. You can try the new Omni 360. You can try, try oh, I like it. Use a scarf. <laughs> you can use it as a scarf. We work. did use that as, uh, as a scarf on the plane. It actually made a really nice scarf That's when true. it's cold. Yeah, yeah. and it can also make a nice little cover. Yeah, lots of perfect. Things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited I and mean, we, we've done one and we have a bunch more to go. Yeah, so I'm we're, super we're excited. Meet, we're together for the whole year. Yeah. So, um, so whenever come. you're in town or if you come live down. here, come on down. Yeah, cool. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me thank you for and having taking me. the time and everyone go get Nurture. It's available on Amazon and booksellers near you. Yeah. Um, also, the contest ends on Monday the 30th. And included in the uh, giveaway is a copy, a signed copy of Erica's book, Nurture. Yes. And if you do get a book and you love it, please um, share and uh, review write, it. Write a review, review about it. it. You know, help a you, this help is a help, lady help out. a lady out. Help <laughs> pay it forward. Well, we know we listen to other moms, so pay it forward and help another mom. Yes. Who's no. coming behind you to figure out to what figure she out needs. what she needs for a healthy pregnancy? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's how I like to look at it. That's totally the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Come hang. Come All right. Hang. <laughs> Sorry, I have my glasses on. Right? <laughs> you know, we're like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks. you. I'm gonna hug you. Yeah. Okay,